Today's game is brought to you by Jefferson Pilot. By Miller Lite. By GTE. And by Toyota. By the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. By Gulf. By Coca-Cola. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Reunion Arena in Dallas, a noisy place today as the Texas Aggies battle the Baylor Bears for the Conference Tournament Championship. Hello again, everybody. I'm Merle Herman to call the play-by-play -play and to analyze the action is Bob Ortigal. Bob, we, not, we have not just one Cinderella team, but two Cinderella teams playing for the title today. Well, we sure do. Baylor, with 18 wins, is led by 6'9'' center Daryl Middleton, the leading scorer in the Southwest Conference, and point guard Michael Williams, first-team all-conference performer. But the Cinderella story lies in the fact that they have not won a regular season or a postseason tournament title in 36 years. They've never appeared in this championship game, and they haven't been in the NCAA tournament since 1950. The Aggies had a tremendous hurdle to overcome in round one. They had to beat TCU, the regular conference champion, and a team that was ranked 15th nationally. And leading the way for the Aggies was powerful forward Winston's Kite, who had 30 points and a great performance. Their Cinderella story? Well, it's the first time in a 12-year history of this classic championship game that the number eight seed team has appeared in the championship. And the Baylor Bears beat the Aggies three times this year. They'll have to do it if they win the tourney title today. We'll be back after this message from Miller Light Beer. When I played hoops, I could beat anybody. Still can. Yo, cheap little one-on-one -on -one or what? Get out of town, man. Chicken! At least I can enjoy a Miller Light while I'm looking for a game, right? How about you, Peanut? Uh, wimp. Light tastes great, but these bean poles probably drink it because it's less filling. Hey, yo, bean pole, you want to show me what you got? <laughs> Tricks are easy. I'd like to get this turkey on the course. It's no contest. There's only one light beer, Miller Light. When I grow up, I'm going to save the whales. I'm going to have a big submarine like the man on TV. First, I got to learn how to swim real good. Then, I got to go to college. I got to get a marine biologically PhD. My mom and dad say I need that. They say, too, if I make good grades, they'll pay for it. My teacher says I draw frogs better than anybody. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. A drink's delightful the second time. <laughs> Hi. Do you remember the first time you tried... Kiss, kiss, kissing? Ooh. But now... <laughs> and when you first tried Coke, I bet you said, uh-uh, not for me. But hey, let's not let first impressions swim. And let's try Coke, Coke, Coke again, shall we? Because once you've acquired that new wave taste, you're going to want to try it again, again, and again. A Coke's delightful the second... Catchy, isn't it? Catch the wave. Coke. Roger. Take me back where I belong Take me where this heart was born Just take me as I am And let me stay gentlemen and welcome to the Southwest Conference Classic 12 for today's championship game between Baylor University and Texas A&M University. Here are your starting lineups for Baylor. Starting at guard, a six foot two inch junior from Dallas, Texas, number 24, Michael Williams. At guard, a six foot two inch senior from Richardson, Texas, number 43, Mark Buchanan. Center, a six foot nine inch junior from Queens, New York, number 44, Daryl Middleton. At forward, a six foot eight inch junior from Dallas, Texas, number 21, Frank Williams. At forward, a six foot four inch junior from Houston, Texas, number 22, Robert McLemore. 
head coach of Baylor, Gene Iba. For Texas A&M University, starting at guard, a six foot three inch junior from Valhalla, New York, number 10, Daryl McDonald. At guard, a six foot senior from Albany, New York, number 11, Todd Holloway. At center, a six foot six inch senior from Round Rock, Texas, number 25, Mike Clifford. Forward, a six foot seven inch senior from Bakersfield, California, number 21, Winston Pike. At forward, a six foot seven inch junior from San Francisco, California, number 44, John Tresvant. The head coach of Texas AM, Shelby Metcalf. beat SMU in Houston. A&M knocked off TCU and Tech to advance to this championship game and we'll be back with a tip-off after this. If you drive like this, you may not want Gulf Super Unleaded, but if you drive like this, you probably do. Gulf Super Unleaded, the high-octane gasoline with high-tech Tecrolene. It cleans intake systems, including fuel injectors, better than any other premium. High octane and high tech technology mean high performance. Golf Super Unlimited. Unlock the power. This is the new shape of tough, the new 87 Big Ford pickup. And to prove its new toughness and power, we're going to haul this Chevy up this monster mountain of boulders while towing this Dodge. And this year, a GMC pickup, too. This new aerodynamic Ford has the biggest V8 engine and a new multi-port fuel-injected 6 standard. And there's more news. Now, there's a six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty on all 87 Ford light trucks. Now, get 3.9% financing or $600 cash back from Ford. You asked 7-Eleven to keep slicing prices. We listen. We're keeping the blade sharp and the prices low. Six packs of Coke in cans, just $1.49. Now, at 7-Eleven. Yeah, we're working harder to make things easier for you. Check this out. All brands of two-liter soft drinks, just $1.39 every day. You know who led the way in cutting your deals like this. 7-Eleven, we're still slicing prices. Texas for the championship game of the Southwest Conference postseason tournament classic number 12. The officials for today's game include Mike Tanko, Woody Mayfield, and Lynn Shortnessy. And we are ready to play basketball as the Baylor Bears, who finished second to TCU in the regular season standings, will go up against Texas A&M. Texas A&M was a tri-champion in the Southwest Conference a year ago. Baylor in green. It'll be Winston Kreit going up against Darrell Middleton, and we're ready to get this ball game underway. The Aggies control, but stepping over the line was Darrell Middleton. That'll turn the ball over to the Baylor Bears. He did step out of bounds, not by a great deal, but he was definitely out of bounds. Good call by the official. I'm Merle Herman along with Bob Ortigal. We welcome basketball fans all over the nation for this championship game from Dallas today. Little conference uh, with the officials. You have to wonder what that discussion was all about. The tip obviously did not go out of bounds. They want to make sure they get uh, the call, the proper call here. And so start with a bit of a delay. Now we go back to play, and Baylor will inbound the ball. Baylor 118 has lost 11 going into the game today. Finished the conference season with a record of 10 and 6. A remarkable improvement from a year ago. Texas A&M starts in a man-to-man, -man and Clifford inside, number 25 in the white, has the difficult assignment of guarding the Southwest Conference leading scorer, number 44, Daryl Middleton, right there. Passed up that little jumper. Michael Williams does not, however, and Holloway rebounds it for Texas A&M. Holloway spins into the circle. Now the Aggies 
Take their time here in getting their offense going. That's Tresman, 44. Don Holloway is the point guard. He's a senior from Albany, New York. The interesting matchup right now is number 22, Robert McLemore in the green, guarding Daryl McDonald. Right there, you got a good look at it, and McDonald scores over the top of Robert McLemore, the best defensive player for Baylor. McDonald, the 6'4 junior from Park East High School in Valhalla, New York, puts uh, Texas A&M on the scoreboard. He had 41 points in the first two games of the tournament. Baylor's Michael Williams and Mark Buchanan. This is Buchanan. you got to watch him. He's deadly from the three-point area outside that circle. He had 24 points in the first round game. He had five straight three-pointers and went six out of nine for the game. Into the lane, penetrating, going to middle, and he lays it in to tie the game. And that's the one-two punch for the Baylor Bears. Michael Williams outside, very creative, excellent quickness, takes care of the basketball, and he created that shot opportunity for the big guy inside, number 44, Middleton. So the score is tied at two. Aggies in possession. The winner of this game goes to the NCAA tournament. It's almost a sure bet that Texas Christian, the conference champion of the year, a winner of 23 games, will also be going. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We have a foul called on Holloway on a charge. Well, you, you would think, Marl, that TCU would go with 23 wins and, and playing a good conference schedule. They're a fine basketball team. Tells you a little bit about the impact of that Texas A&M upset of TCU the other day. But that's happening all over the country. There's some good teams falling by the wayside. Michael Williams front courts the ball for Baylor. The Bears, 18 and 11, 10 and 6 for the year in the conference. The Aggies, 16 and 13 overall, and 6 and 10 in the conference. They were not expected to be in this championship game, but they have earned it. They played tough. This is Frank Williams going to the baseline, and Tresman comes up with an excellent defensive play against Robert McLemore. And a whistle in the lane as McDonald is fouled by number 21, Frank Williams of Baylor. The check there, number 24, Michael Williams of Baylor. Now McDonald has that great quickness, and he really has gained in confidence. He's a junior college transfer, and he's really starting to come into his own. That's happened here in the last month, but he's had an excellent tournament. He's had 41 points and 11 rebounds so far in this tournament. His inbound pass is not good to Holloway, and the Aggies turn the ball over. Well, we'll give an assist to the cheerleader over there who caught the ball in the megaphone and gave it back to the official. There's the dean of the Southwest Conference coaches, Shelby Metcalf, in his 24th year, 396 wins. The Sage of the Brazos, they call him. Score tied at two early minutes of the Southwest Conference Championship game. This is Mark Buchanan who wheels to the left side. He's a much better shooter from that side. Heavy traffic and a turnover on a double dribble. Nice defensive work for the Aggies. McLemore thought he got pushed just a little bit. When he did, the basketball came out of his hands and he dribbled, called for double dribble and a traveling violation. Across the country, if you're wondering, is Gene Iba part of the famous Iba family? The answer is yes. His father, Clarence, coached at Tulsa. His uncle, Henry Iba, coached at Oklahoma State. Fred's man shot, followed by Clifford, and put two on the board for the Aggies. Clifford, a real plotter. You see him right there, number 25. He works hard inside, good defensive player, and on 13 different occasions this year, he has led A&M in rebounding. A little penetration to the lane by McLemore. Robert McLemore doesn't score a lot, but what a defensive player. Trasman tries to take it home, travel with the ball. And it'll go over to Baylor. Good call by the official. You can't jump in the air, drop the ball, pick it up, and then shoot it. He didn't make a great shot. But right here, you can't do this. He dropped it, picked it back up. Look at that shot. It counts, and it looks good. <laughs> but not when it goes in that way. You can't travel first. The Aggies lead it by 4-2. to two. Williams ties it. That's Michael Williams. 36 points for him in the tournament now, this being the third game. 16 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half here at Reunion Arena in Dallas. Winston Cride has been an outstanding performer in the tournament. Clifford misses the follow, and a follow pumped up by Tresman is not good, and we've got a whistle under the basket. 
Clifford, Tresvant, and Kreit really working the offensive glass very hard. Going baseline, coming up inside. The shot by number 21, Winston Kreit. You see Clifford with a tip that did not go down, but John Tresvant, number 44, is there, and there's Kreit again. Kreit's basket was after the whistle, though. Tresvant at the line. Frank Williams, the 6'8 junior from Dallas, getting his first foul, and Tresvant connects on the free throw. Tresvant has not been heard from a lot in scoring. He's averaged 10 points a game, but he's capable of getting a hot hand and getting 15 or 20 for you. He's off to a start with two free throws. He's had 10 points in the first two games, so it is 6-4 A&M. Todd Holloway, number 11, has Buchanan for Baylor, the great outside shooter. Here come the Aggies on three. Yes! Two McDonald solos. He is exciting. He is electrifying. He does do some things from time to time that are not always wise, but he's an excellent player. Baylor calls a timeout as Texas A&M leads in the early going by a score of 8-4. to four. This is a haze modem. Plug it into ordinary phone lines, and you can send financial projections to the PC down the hall. Or locate a single part anywhere across the country. Make airline reservations. Send or receive electronic mail. Or access millions of pages of data, from company profiles to every fact in the encyclopedia. The Hayes Modem. It's like sending your PC to college for under $600. Hours ago, a storm left this office powerless. Typewriters, computers, none of today's modern business tools were working. Except one. You see, as a GTE switching technician, Ted Benfield knew people were counting on him to keep the phones working. And that's what he was going to do, even if it meant hooking up a portable generator to every switching station in the area. Which, by the way, is exactly what he did. GTE. Quality service from quality people. Honey? Uh-oh. Bad day with Fishman. The worst. I ran out of my antiperspirant. I've been using your spray. So? So, I'm ready to negotiate. I take off my jacket. Oh, yuck! I'm going back to Secret. Because it's strong enough for a man. Secret Solid is better than your spray. And it's pH balanced for women. I should move now. Mm, definitely changing. Secret, strong enough for a man. But definitely made for a woman. Gene Iba took over the Baylor basketball program a year ago, and it was a tough year for him, but he's a happy man this year as his Bears have won 18 ball games and are going for the title this afternoon against the Aggies. Ball will stay with Baylor, knocked away by John Tresvant, number 44. Tresvant off to a pretty good start, and he's kind of a player, the kind of a player that when he does that, he gets off to a good start. He has a pretty good basketball game. We'll watch and see if it continues. Ball was inbounded. Yeah. Offensive foul called on Robert McLemore of Baylor, number 22. That is a third team foul against the Bears. I think McLemore might have forced that just a little bit. Uh, an ill-advised shot that he had taken earlier. That's going to cost him a little bit of playing time right now. Good defensive job by John Tresvant, number 44 for A&M. Moved over in front, was able to plant the feet and draw the charge. Michael Hobbs, number 23, a 6'3 freshman from Houston, is into the ball game for Robert McLemore. And Hobbs, a pretty good freshman. He's blessed with great quickness. Clifford comes up high. Clifford, not much of a scorer, but very good defensive player, and he really has basketball smart. As Holloway tried to get the shot up there, and it's batted down, but a foul is called on the Bears. It is on Darrell Middleton. That will be his first. A&M with a conference there before the free throw is shot. You have to wonder if they might be discussing what it is they're going to do in terms of defensive pressure. Should they go full court with any kind of defensive pressure or whether or not they're changing their half court defense at the other end of the floor. Todd Holloway has scored 18 points in the first two games. Gets his first of the afternoon. There's part of the Aggie band, and they're the 12th man, just like in football. They stand throughout the game, part of the court. Todd Holloway ready for his number two shot, the six-foot senior from Albany, New York. And so the Aggies take a 10-4 lead over the Bears of Baylor. You have to like Holloway. He seems to have so much fun playing the game, and that's what collegiate basketball is all about. You need to enjoy playing the game. 
And Holloway getting a takeaway from McDonald, who misses a layup, and Tresnet missed the follow, and Holloway gets fouled as he goes for the follow. McDonald would like to have that back. He made a good quick move to the hole, tried to take it the length of the floor. Here it is. Look where he takes off. Michael Williams getting out of the way, did not draw the charge. Tresvant misses the tip, 44. Holloway, number 11, with the rebound. Obviously gets hammered right there. So Holloway will go to the line for two. Michael Hobbs getting his first foul of the day. Holloway is three out of three. Boy, Holloway backed out of there very quickly. Was not at the line very long. It's kind of as if uh, ooh, I blew that one, but he didn't. But he did that one. But a great offensive rebound, a lot of hustle out of Winston Pride, who's been one of the outstanding players in the tournament. He is number 21. Get acquainted with that number and that name, because I'm sure he'll be very prominent in this ball game today. 11 to 4, Texas A&M. The Aggies have the ball. 14:30 left to go in the first half. Merle Herman and Bob Ortigal with you in Dallas. Delighted to have you with us this afternoon. Clifford on the outside, roaming the baseline. McDonald. Clifford takes it to the baseline right, comes underneath the trash bag. I'll tell you, Middleton from Baylor is doing an excellent job in that particular series, especially of pressuring Winston Fright. They're really trying to keep the ball away from Fright. Right now, the Bears are down by 13 to 4 and need to get something going here. And their fans call on them. Here's Buchanan. Good outside shooter. We've talked about him to this point in the basketball game, and we'll continue to talk about him. The young man is just one of the finest three point shooters in the country. He's got a quick release. He very seldom puts the ball on the floor, but if you give him enough daylight, he'll shoot it and shoot it well. Little hand check there, okay. Aggies have the ball, leading it by 13 to 7. Bright hits the rim, will not go for him. And Middleton rebounds it out of there for the Baylor Bears. A little bit out of character for Craig. He does not normally face the basket and get shots. He's better with his back to the basket. Baylor trailing by six here. And they try to get Buchanan free again. Movement by Hobbs, penetration into the lane. They come back to the outside. Texas A&M doing a pretty good job defensively. Shot on the way is not good by Frank Williams, but a foul is called on Texas A&M. Shelby Metcalf, Dr. Metcalf, if you will, got his doctorate in philosophy at A&M in 1974, his dissertation, crowd behavior at Southwest Conference basketball game. He is an interesting gentleman, a lot of fun to be around, and he brings some of that humor to the basketball court. He, he really is a, a great individual and the winningest coach in the history of the Southwest Conference. McLemore is back right now for Baylor, number 22, their strongest defensive player. Frank Williams missing the first free throw. Twenty-two Crawford was off the bench yesterday for AM and played extremely well in the victory over Texas Tech. Paul Crawford, a 6'5 junior from College Station, a hometown product. Williams, one out of two on the line. It's the Aggies 13 and the Bears 8 with 13 minutes and five seconds to go in the first half. Baylor stays in that man-to-man, -man, and Robert McLemore off the bench now accepts the assignment of guarding Winston Kreit. Paul Crawford is handling the ball now as a good outside shooter. Okay, we're looking at two Baylor people playing man-to-man. -man. They're playing Kreit and McDonald man-to-man, -man, and then they're playing a three-man zone. Frank Williams, Middleton, and Buchanan are playing a zone. You see him there. We've got a defensive change. They come back to the outside to Crawford. That frees Holloway on the right side for a short jumper that will not go, and the Bears rebound it out of there, and Buchanan will bring it up the floor. It's the Aggies 13 and the Bears 8 here in the first half. Bad pass out of bounds. And a turnover on uh, Michael Williams. Soft pass. That's the kind of mistake, the kind of error that just drives you nuts. And look at Gene Iber right there. That just drives you nuts as a basketball coach because it's an unforced error. It's a mistake that it's just hard to live with. You can live with honest mistakes. 
Karan Graves, number 20, has come in for Texas A&M. He's a junior from Brenham, Texas. He has replaced Paul Crawford. Graves, a good outside shooter and a pretty good three-point shooter. Holloway tries for three. He can't get it. Middleton clears the board. Middleton is an all-purpose player, and he's a junior. In fact, the Baylor Bears lose only one starter, and he is the man who just handled the ball. That's Buchanan, who feeds it off, and the shot is missed by Frank Williams, an air ball, and here come the Aggies. That's not the shot that Coach Iba wants Frank Williams to take. I'll promise you. Daryl McDonald really go after you one-on-one. -on -one. They wheel the ball to the left side, moving it around the perimeter. 13 to 8, Texas A&M over the Baylor Bears. Look at Robert McLemore trying to play in front of Winston Kreit wherever he goes. There's Graves from the outside, and he's on the board. 15 to 8, Texas A&M. 11 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Here come the Bears. Right back down the floor, and Mark Buchanan is number 43, and 24 is Michael Williams, two outstanding backcourt men. Williams, great block there, knocked away by Darrell McDonald. Very quick hands. McDonald, number 10. We'll have some switches. Coconuts is coming in for Texas A&M. More about that, because right now we have a timeout, and we'll return to Reunion Arena in Dallas after this. We'll be back after this message from Miller Light Beer. Hey, guys, great barbecue. Yeah, plenty of Miller Light. Have a can, Rodney. This one's empty. Mighty fine playing, Jim. Wouldn't me. <laughs> Something tells me we're not alone in the universe. what they want. Probably our Miller Lake, because it tastes great. That's silly. That's silly. Look! Oh, Mickey! We're doomed. I'll tell you, we don't have no respect. So this is Earth, huh? Where were the girls? Wow! Well, what a pack of handsome guys! No matter where you're from, there's only one light beer. Miller Lake. I tell you, it's not easy being us. Huh? Oh, what a crowd. What a crowd. The Great American Face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Atra Plus. Solid. With the Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Atra Plus. Only from Gillette. Texas A&M uh, on the low end of the shooting percentage, Bob, but look at the Baylor shots. They've only had, what, six? Only six shots. Uh, they've made half of them for 50%. That's an impressive shooting percentage, but that's not enough shots. You know, one of the things that is a little mysterious about the first uh, almost 10 minutes of the ball game, nine minutes, Texas A&M is leading 15 to 8, but Winston Kreit doesn't have a single point. Well, he really doesn't, and they're doing a good job inside on Winston Kreit. He hasn't had the ball an awful lot, and when he does get the basketball, he's facing the basket and very definitely prefers to play the game with his back to the basket. It'll be Baylor's ball to inbound. Mark Buchanan. To handle it, Chris Kokonos, number four, is now in the game for Texas A&M. He's the shortest player on the floor right now. Pumped up there by Michael Williams. Now, as a result of a quick first step and excellent overall quickness, Williams creates a shot opportunity, uses the glass well, and comes away with a two-pointer. Now, they've gone out of that combination defense. They're straight man-to-man. -man. Baylor is straight man-to-man -man with James Francis in the game. We might mention number 35, James Francis, a starting linebacker for the Baylor Bears in football. You don't see many people across the country playing both sports at this level. His brother was an All-American defensive back. You go inside to Clifford, and Karan Graves coming down the baseline is guilty of a charge. Good job by Buchanan. He moved over, had good position, and was able to draw the charge. Here's the move on the baseline.
Karan Graves. At least he tried to make that move, but Buchanan was there in good position. I'll tell you, interesting comment about Mark Buchanan. Coach Ibis said, I like a lot of things about the young man, especially what happens between his left ear and his right ear. <laughs> it's Francis who has the ball taken away, and traveling is called against Karan Graves of a &M. Shelby Metcalf, a bit disappointed on that one. Shelby, in his 24th year, has won six Southwest Conference titles, has won more conference games than any other coach. <laughs> and it's coat, uh, taking off coat time as Gene Iba takes off the green blazer. A&M with uh, six turnovers, the same for Baylor now. Middleton, Clifford has him. Good move by Michael Williams. Will not go down for him. Middleton going after the board. It's cleared away by Daryl McDonald. Underneath the Winston Kreit, and he misses the turnaround layup, a little hook, but he is fouled. That's where Winston Kreit, number 21, you see him right there, likes to play the game. Here's an excellent interior feed along the baseline to Winston Kreit, but he misses that little puppy in there. He'd like to have that one back. Boy, he's had a great tournament. That's you know, Merle, for the last two years, Winston Kreit, has been first team all tournament in this Southwest Conference Classic. And you have to believe he's going to be that again with 56 points and 18 rebounds in two games so far. That foul was on Middleton, his second. Right, one out of two. I bet a lot of pro football coaches are watching him today. He played tight end in high school, didn't play football at uh, Texas A&M, but what a body and what a potential pro player in football he might be. Got a great pair of hands. 16 to 10, Texas Aggies lead the Baylor Bears. Quite a battle going on inside with Clifford and Middleton. James Francis ball partially deflected by Kreit. Here come the Aggies. alley -oop. Oh, what a great block by Middleton. But McDonald winds up with the ball and he is fouled by Mark Buchanan, number 43 of Baylor. We saw McDonald right there. With with a real display of showtime. He tried to make that fancy pass. He tried to make the alley-oop lob pass to Winston Kreit. You see where he was well above the rim. Watch this. Ah, we're going to miss that pass that he made, but McDonald draws that foul. You just cannot reach out against McDonald or Michael Williams from Baylor. They are too quick. If you reach and they take that first step, that official is going to blow that whistle because your hand is going to make contact and you're going to get the foul. You have to move your feet. You got to give him a little bit of room and move your feet. Daryl McDonald, his second shot. Good. And the Aggies lead by eight at 18 to 10 with 9.02 to go in the first half. Baylor walks the ball up the floor with Michael Williams. Baylor was red hot in the first game, the first round of the tournament. Shooting over 70% the first half and 60% for the game and rolling up 83 points, which is the highest point total of any team in the conference this year. Well, that ball go ahead, no, but almost did. It almost on did. On a deflection. Deflected up off the glass and was almost a basket. Todd Holloway puts it up off the baseline and gets whacked by Robert McLemore, number 22. I think A&M is very much in charge of this basketball game because of the defensive job they're doing. Look at the pressure here. That's the guy where they want they want to get the basketball to him. He's their leading scorer. When the ball goes in, he draws so much attention. That's a good defensive job by Texas A&M. If they continue to do that, they're going to be in pretty good shape. Todd Holloway, three out of four. One of the keys, though, and people forget this about post defense, you can do the job playing defense on people inside, but you must apply good pressure on the passer. Make it difficult for the guy with the ball to find that open man inside. Holloway, two out of two on this trip, and now five for six on the free throw line. John Tresvant, number 44, is back into the game for the Texas Aggies, and onto the bench goes Coconos. Uh, check that, Clifford. 20 to 10, Texas A&M. You know, most of the games in this tournament have kind of started out like this. Then we've had some pretty interesting closes to the second half, including the game yesterday that got Baylor over 
the University of Houston by two points at the end of this championship game. That was not a good foul that time by number 20 for Texas A&M, Karan Graves. When Robert McLemore moves out beyond that three-point line, you really don't have to deny him the basketball. He's not a threat out there. He'll shoot it from out there once in a while, but he really will not beat you out there. Michael Hobbs is back into the game for the Baylor Bears. Middleton, the fake and the shot. And it will not go, and the rebound is pulled off by Robert McLemore. He lost it, and they get another shot up. And now a foul is called on McLemore. So he gets two in a hurry, and now he has three. Been a tough afternoon for number 22. You're looking at him right there. He's not off to a good start. He did a good job going to the offensive glass and authoritatively was able to get that rebound, but missed that little layup when he went back up. And then he compounded the error by committing the foul. Winston Kreit goes to the free throw line. Frank Williams back in, 6'8", 235, number 21 for Baylor. He's back for Robert McLemore. Pride has been the top rebounder and shot blocker for three years for the Aggies. Misses a free throw. Karan Graves gets it out of there to Transman, however. And the Aggies keep the ball with a 20-10 lead and eight minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half. Get it inside to Pride. That's all it takes. Well, that's where he likes to play, and that's exam an example of what I've been talking about. And the only thing that happened that time was when the ball went into Kreit. He didn't get defensively. There was no help on him. Middleton, guarding Kreit, did not get any help at all from the other people. Kreit was able to turn, go to the basket, and dunk the ball with authority. You're about to see one of the many things this Ford Taurus can hold. It's called the road. Ford designed the Taurus wagon to handle confidently and to respond with precision. Because you should get more out of a wagon than what you put into it. This is Taurus. Ford, now with a six-year, 60,000-mile new car powertrain warranty. If your car leans toward the high performance, we suggest that before the performance starts, you get Gulf Super Unleaded, the high-octane gasoline with high-tech tech relief. It cleans intake systems, including fuel injectors, better than any other premium. High-octane and high-tech tech relief mean high performance. Gulf Super Unleaded. Unlock the power. from the field for Baylor, 36%. Texas A&M, 6 out of 15 for 40%. But don't let that be misleading because both teams are playing pretty good defense. Consequently, it's really affected shot selection and shooting percentage. Tresvant fouls Middleton, trying to take the ball away. And that's an example of the kind of defense that's been played. He certainly didn't want to commit the foul, but they, they have been uptight, trying to deny lead passes. Five team fouls against Shelby Metcalf, who, and his uh, Aggies, who, by the way, still has his coat on. Yesterday, he had his coat off and his tie off, and everybody was wondering if he was going to take his shirt off. <laughs> it got a little warm in here yesterday. Middleton, number 44, brings it to the outside, turns it over to Buchanan. Holloway has done a pretty good job of chasing Buchanan around the floor. Oh, he's done a great job. Buchanan's had one shot. He was able to drain it, but he just hasn't had the ball very much. Now to middle and off the baseline, arches it a bit too high, but an offensive board and a putback is good by Michael Hobbs, number 23. 22-12, Texas A&M was 7-15 to go in the first half. This is the championship game of the Southwest Conference postseason tournament. The winner of this one goes on to the NCAA tournament. And it's expected that the conference champion, 23-game winner, Texas uh, Christian, will be a shoe-in. Of course, the Aggies upset TCU in the first round. 
That's been a topsy-turvy Southwest Conference season this year, too. Good fake by Karan Graves. And how did he get that ball up after it was deflected? He still was able to maintain control and pump it up there. That was a great job. He really a good example of maintaining the presence of mind because he was concentrating, regained control of the ball, and got it up off the glass. Francis, number 35, along with Middleton, the two big men. Tresvant fouls Middleton. Tresvant, one of his problems all year, Bob, he's had he's had foul troubles. Well, he does have a tendency to, to foul. He really does, and it was a factor yesterday. He spent a lot of time on the bench, and he needs to go to the bench right now because of foul problems. And that makes a difference for A&M because he's an excellent jumper. He's active inside. Creates a lot of problems for the opponent. Clifford is in for Tresman, who goes to the bench. Timeout call by Baylor. As Mark Buchanan was, I guess he was at about the three count when he called the timeout. And a very wise one. 6.27 to go with this timeout for the Baylor Bears. We're in the first half of play, and the Aggies lead Baylor 24 to 12. We're watching the end of an era. Recent government changes in Medicare, Social Security, even student loans, tell us we should no longer take those benefits for granted. So more and more people are turning to Jefferson Pilot Companies for insurance and financial services. We've been helping people like you deal successfully with change for more than 80 years. Not just to protect your life, but your way of life. Right now, you can get some of Toyota's best-selling cars and trucks loaded with a special sport group option package. Options like AM, FM, stereo cassette, aluminum wheels, a rear spoiler, special striping, body side molding. In fact, there are so many options, you'll have to see to believe. But the best part is, you can get them at a special package price at St. Jim to $672, and that's a lot. So see your Toyota dealer and save big bucks on value package Toyotas. Remember to stay tuned to the end of today's game when we'll be selecting our Ford player of the game. That's coming up at the end of the game, the Ford player of the game. Timeout. You know, Merle, I, I don't agree with that timeout. I, I'm sure that Coach Iba would not uh, call that from the bench. Uh, Baylor has only two timeouts left with the entire second half to go and six minutes and 27 seconds in the first half. That could be a real factor down the stretch. Jody Reeves is making his first appearance in the tournament as he replaces James Francis. Reeves or Francis who goes to the bench. Reeves is 6'7 senior from Allen, Texas. And he, he gets into the scorebook in a hurry. Somebody forgot about him. Not an uncommon mistake when you're playing man-to-man -man defense. You must be sure that you know who has entered the basketball game and make sure that you know who is guarding that man. Now Baylor goes to his zone. Or basically, they've been zoned, but it looks like they're using a one-man chaser. Well, they've, they've really been combination along with a regular man-to-man, -man, but now they're zoned. It's a zone now. Hafford in the ball game, number 10. Clifford wheels it into Kreit, baseline to McDonald, back to the outside. The Aggies lead it 24 to 14. We have seen a lot of different defensive looks from Baylor here in the first half. Foul on Baylor, and it is on Jody Reeves. Coach Iba is really unhappy with that call. The shot outside by Crawford. Clifford touching that basketball when it hit the rim. That in itself is a violation. Reeves comes away with the foul. Kreit goes up. Reeves makes contact. Kreit, stronger of the two. That's why he was able to come away with a basketball. But he draws the foul and will get an opportunity to shoot a couple free throws. Deron Graves, number 20, is back in for the Aggies as Kreit connects. Kreit is an outstanding tournament player, and he's doing it again this year. He's been all-conference two years in a row, all-tournament selection two years in a row. And he keeps right on rolling. And three times he has made all tournament teams, holiday tournament teams. He just loves the word tournament. You tell him it's going to be a tournament, and he shows up ready to play, Merle. Showtime. 61 points in the three games now. The Bears trail at 26 to 14. They've trailed by 12 three times. From the outside, Hobbs, no good. Bright rebounding. The Aggies zip it up the floor in a hurry. 
The Aggies on top, 26 to 14. Both these teams are pretty patient on the floor. They work the clock, 29 seconds to go on the shot clock. Deron Graves from the outside. And Kreit for the rebound. Graves will get another shot at it, and he banks it in. Well, the thing you have to like about that rebound by Winston Kreit, it was very definitely a traffic rebound. He didn't look like an athletic rebounder that time. He went after the ball, and you need to go to the basketball if you're going to get those traffic kind of rebounds. It's easy to jump up and slap it and be a TV rebounder. He did not do that. Now the Aggies lead by 14, their biggest lead of the afternoon. Frank Williams. This is Hafford, who's now in the game, and he gets hit with a charging foul. Stephen Hafford gets the foul. Nothing is going right for Baylor right now, but you got to give A&M a lot of credit for that. Look at Winston Kreit go to the ball that time. We talked about that rebound he had the last time down the floor. He was able to get it back. He gets it to Karan Graves, who makes a good move to his right for the two-pointer. Back into the ball game for the Baylor Bears is Michael Williams, number 24. Williams is the second leading scorer, but uh, Michael Williams and Darrell Middleton have been held in check this afternoon. They've got six points between them, and we're near the four-minute mark to go in the first half. Merle, I believe Baylor really is more comfortable in the straight man-to-man -man defense that they normally play. I'm of the opinion that the different defensive looks in this particular ball game have really hurt them. Tip in by Winston Kreit, but what an original feed by McDonald to Clifford. I'll tell you what's happening. They're playing that zone defense, and in the zone defense, you have to be careful that you don't forget about blocking out, and they're not blocking out, and it's hurt, hurting them on the defensive board, hurting Baylor, that is. Kreit's coming away with the ball. Michael Hobbs will not go in. It is tipped in, however, by number 21, Frank Williams. Frank Williams just powered that basketball back up and in. His strength paid off for him there. You look at that zone again. They continue to stay in that, and I think they're out of sync as a result of it. The Aggies leading it 30-16. to 16. It's been all Texas A&M throughout the first half. The Bears scored 83 points in the opening round in their ball game, which gives you an idea of the kind of firepower that they can generate. But right now, they've been having all kinds of difficulty with the Aggies this afternoon. They're tremendously aggressive on the boards. They're a good rebounding team. But they've also been hot from the outside and also the inside. Here's Holloway. Speaking of hot from the outside, not quite. But here's McDonald on a follow trying to hit Clifford. And Clifford winds up for the ball. And then a foul is called on Mark Buchanan, number 43 of Baylor. Well, Michael Williams almost had it back. But then he lost it, and Clifford was able to pick it up. And that man, number 43, committed the foul. You see McDonald with a little double pump off Clifford's back. Michael Williams in there quickly. He gets a piece of it but didn't control it. Clifford picks it up, and Buchanan reaches in and commits the foul. So to the free throw line goes Mike Clifford as a free thrower. Get a load of this. Three out of 37. And now he's 3 out of 38 this year. He shoots very well from the field, 50%, but not on the free throw line. 30 to 16. That's an amazing free throw statistic. He's shooting 8% from the line. Middleton, fouled by Clifford, I believe. In defense of Clifford, though, I really do want to mention the fact that he's been a very key part of this Texas A&M team, and he's had a good tournament. He's a good rebounder, good defensive player. The other day in a press conference, Shelby Metcalf said he can do everything that the game requires except shoot the basketball. On the line will be Middleton. Last year, the Aggies, uh, with Clifford helping out, won 20 and lost 12, and were 12-4 and four in the conference and a tri-champion. And they were in this championship game one year ago. Baylor is really struggling. This is not indicative of the kind of Baylor basketball team that we have seen all year. They finished second in the Southwest Conference. They had 18 wins. And I think right now we just have to attribute 
the performance here in the first half to the fact that, that they are not in their normal rhythm. And I think it's a result of what's happened at the defensive end of the floor. I'd be willing to bet you my paycheck that that'll change in the second half. Ted Thomas has come into the game now. Karan Graves has gone out for Texas A&M. Of course, my paycheck's not very big. <laughs> Clifford gets the rebound, so the Baylor Bears are having trouble everywhere in this first half. Two minutes, eight seconds to go in the half. Winston Kreit trying a foot fake against the Midland, which he wouldn't buy, and this is Holloway. He likes it in there. Boy, doesn't he, though? And that's why. When he gets the basketball inside with his back to the basket, he's extremely comfortable in addition to be, being very confident. Seven points for Kreit, 32-16. Texas A&M, Middleton gets stopped on the baseline by Clifford, comes way to the outside. And the shot on the way by Hobbs. So Michael Hobbs scores for Baylor, and it is now 32-19. Tell you what, a few of those three-pointers would change things very quickly for the Baylor Bears, and they can shoot them. Hobbs will shoot it, doesn't shoot it as well as Buchanan, but he will shoot it and can shoot it pretty well. So with that three-pointer, Hobbs has five for the game, and Donald gets two of them back. Good example of what Texas A&M will do from time to time. They'll go 1-4. McDonald out front will go one on one. The other four people will line up across the baseline from sideline to sideline, and he simply takes his man one on one. You see it right there. It's a one four offense. McDonald goes one on one. He does it very well. He's creative, great quickness. And the foul inside by number 43, Thomas, right there. Didn't look like a lot of contact to me. But he gets the foul, regardless of what I think. <laughs> and at the free throw line, is Michael Williams and Baylor Bears are having trouble at the line, trouble on the outside, trouble on the boards. 34 to 19, Texas A&M with 54 seconds left to go in the first half. Texas Aggies going for the championship. They were the eighth seeded team. Nobody expected to be, to be here, but they started out by beating the regular season champion and 23 game winner and 15th ranked nationally TCU. However, if you look at the scores this year, they lost a lot of close basketball games. Comes in and out for Holloway and cleared away by Frank Williams. Now three on one. Williams decides to take over Michael Williams. That's an aspect of the Baylor Bear basketball game that has been missing. They have not been able to get any transition baskets. They do not have any easy baskets, and they are accustomed to getting two or three of those a half. No, yes, 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 yes. is fouled by Michael Williams, number 24. And we have eight seconds left to go in the first half. This has been missing from the Baylor game. Baylor comes away with a basketball. A quick outlet here to Michael Williams with great quickness who goes the length of the floor and gets the easy two-pointer. And if Baylor's going to get back in, they need a few of those. That's an important part of an offensive arsenal. Ted Thomas is out of the ball game, and Mike Clifford, number 25, is back in for the Texas Aggies, who so far have had things pretty much their own way. We'll have a switch now as Dave Reichert, a 6'4 senior from Dallas, comes in for the Baylor Bears. He has not played in the tournament yet, except for just seven or eight seconds of the first game. Closing it out. The Aggies missed the free throw, and the Bears come up court with the ball. The shot is on the way, but it will not count if it goes in because we have run out of time. And so the Texas Aggies have had things their own way throughout the first half. They lead it by a score of 34 to 21, and the Aggies have beaten Baylor in this first half in about every aspect of the game. So the Aggies lead it 34-21 at halftime. face takes enough abuse without your disposable razor hurting it more. Now, Gillette introduces Good News Plus, the new disposable with a white Lubra Smooth Strip designed to reduce pulling and skin irritation. Hurts so bad. Finally, there's a disposable that feels so good. Good News Plus, new from Gillette, the essence of shaving. Will you turn the light on? He's out of town. 
What are we looking for? We'll know it when we find it. This guy flies back and forth like he had his own company plane. How can he afford it? It's too convenient. You know, this guy... Will you come down? Can't be. How did he get home so soon? It is like he has a company plane. Fly Southwest Airlines. Just say when. A simple country boy has simple needs. A house, a car, and the most advanced high-performance tires on the road. Take me where this heart began. Love to ride the same good land that my daddy loved. The Goodyear Eagle VR was developed out of a Formula One racing tire design, and that's important. Just going next door. Goodyear, take me home. Jim Cole knows his business inside out. So when he needed a phone system, he wanted to talk to someone who knew phones just as well. Carrie Hill is such a person. As one of our specially trained salespeople, she has the knowledge to analyze needs, demonstrate products, and recommend the perfect system. We think anyone who runs a small business shouldn't have to run around looking for the right phone. GTE, quality service from quality people. Winners of the Coca-Cola Southwest Conference Trivia Contest are staying at the Hyatt Regency Dallas. If you're planning a trip to Dallas, why not stay at the Hyatt, the official hotel of the Southwest Conference Tournament? Call 1-800-228-9000 for reservations. Winners will be dining at Lowry's, the prime rib in Dallas. Enjoy prime ribs of beef roasted in the English tradition, then carved to order right before you. If it calls for something special, call for reservations. Come to Lowry's, the prime rib, and enjoy the prime of your life. Time in Reunion Arena in the Southwest Conference Championship tournament game today, and Texas A&M is running away with it at halftime by a score of 34 to 21. I'm Merle Harmon, along with Bob Ortigal. Bob, Baylor's going to have to do a complete turnaround in the second half. Well, they really have struggled here in the first half, but let me tell you why. Daryl Middleton, the leading scorer in the Southwest Conference, has two points and two rebounds. Texas A&M has done an excellent job against him. I think Baylor is completely out of sync as a result of what's happening at their defensive end of the floor. They've done a lot of different things defensively, and I think it's affected their game at the offensive end. But Baylor's not getting scoring from the guards either. Well, they're really not. Now, Michael Williams opened up a little bit there toward the end of the half, and they need that. Baylor needs some of those transition baskets to get back in this thing, and they need Buchanan to shoot a few three-pointers. Well, it's all Aggies so far in the first half this afternoon here at Reunion. The Aggies are leading the Baylor Bears by a score of 34 to 21 at halftime, and we'll be back after this. Last year, Ford Taurus was named Motor Trend Car of the Year. This year, Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe has been named Motor Trend Car of the Year. That's two years in a row for Ford. In fact, only Ford Division has won this award two years running. But then... Only Ford builds cars like these. Ford, now with a six-year, 60,000-mile new car powertrain warranty. If you drive like this, you may not want Gulf Super Unleaded. But if you drive like this, you probably do. Gulf Super Unleaded, the high-octane gasoline with high-tech tetraline. It cleans intake systems, including fuel injectors, better than any other premium. High octane and high tech tech will mean, mean high performance. Golf Super Unlimited. Unlock the power. <laughs> my mother always wanted me to be a success. Now I've got my own company. But I never realized how much it costs to take care of your people. Like retirement plans, disability. You know, medical coverage is a lot more than a couple of first aid kits and a part time nurse. Then there's dental insurance. I have to take care of 32,000 teeth. <laughs> Are you happy, Mom? Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. With the Hayes modem, a sales manager can check inventories in manufacturing or track shipments through the mainframe across the country. A lawyer can get precedence to prepare a brief. A farmer can check commodity prices to determine when to sell. And an investor 
can get the information he needs from Dow Jones, Dun and Bradstreet, or even the government. The Hayes modem. It's like fitting a 10,000 book library in a 10 inch case. Well, let's try it one more time. At Texas A&M University, every victory means a lot. All right, that's what we're looking for. Through the years, Baylor University has offered students from around the world a high standard of value-based Christian education. Today, Baylor proudly continues its traditions of moral awareness, academic excellence, and individual achievement. Baylor University, a place to meet the challenges of our times, a place to learn, a place to grow. Relive the exciting memories of the Southwest Conference postseason classic with a copy of the official 1987 souvenir program. It's the same program being sold this weekend in Reunion Arena. To order your copy, send check or money order for $5 to 1987 Southwest Conference Program. Post Office Box 1987A, Lexington, Kentucky, 40593, 1987. Order yours today. Today's Hayes Classroom Champion, brought to you by Hayes Microcomputer Products, is Scott Johnson of Southern Methodist University. Scott has been an important part of the Mustangs basketball program the past four years. He is one of the top shooting guards in the Southwest Conference. Scott capped an outstanding high school career in Meridian, Idaho, by being named the State Player of the Year. Scott has been a member of the Southwest Conference All-Academic Team the past two seasons. Scott Johnson of Southern Methodist University, today's Hayes Classroom Champion. Now it's time for the Inside Track. The Inside Track brought to you by Goodyear. And for today's Inside Track, we're happy to have the Commissioner of the Southwest Conference, Mr. Fred Jacoby, with us. Fred, the conference has had some problems. Well, that's true. We're going through an agonizing and wrenching period right now. We really have some misguided loyalties with some of our alumni and boosters. However, there will be an opportunity now to make some significant changes, which I think will improve and, and certainly make the conference better for it. On the positive uh, side of the book, though, a lot of good things are happening in the conference with various uh, athletic teams winning honors. Well, that's true on a national basis. Uh, Ar University of Arkansas has won a cross-country national championship, as has the University of Texas in women's. Uh, right now, and in, going into spring sports, uh, University of Texas ranked number one in baseball and, and, uh, and, t and SMU very high in tennis. So we got a lot of positive things to talk about, and University of Texas women ranked number one nationally in basketball. Pretty well-rounded program. Well, we think so. Usually each year the, the Southwest Conference will be either number one or two nationally for the All-Sports Championship. Fred, uh, Raycom has certainly been delighted to be associated with the Southwest Conference over the past three years, and you brought us a lot of excitement. Well, Raycom is an excellent syndicator. I think they're the number one nationally now, and we're pleased that we're entering into a four-year agreement with Raycom to handle both the football and basketball in the Southwest Conference, so we're very pleased with the relationship. We're delighted to be with you. Now comes the tough question. What about the second half of today's game? Well, I think Baylor has dropped behind. They're going to have to have about a 10 or 11 point run here, something like 14 to 2 or 14 to 4 to cut it down. Then it'll be anybody's game. Well, let's go beyond the game today and talk about the NCAA tournament. Well, we're very, uh, we're very hopeful that uh, Texas Christian University, with a 23 and 6 record, uh, ranked nationally. Even though they're upset, they'll be in. Of course, the winner of this, then the national invitational tournament is always a possibility, and we're hopefully getting three teams in there: probably Houston, Arkansas, and possibly the loser of this game. So Southwest Conference basketball does not end today with the tournaments ahead. Well, it's on its way back. Okay. Thank you so much, Fred. Fred Jacoby, the commissioner of the Southwest Conference. And that's the inside track on the Southwest Conference, brought to you by Goodyear.
We're at halftime uh, here at Reunion Arena. Texas A&M is leading Baylor by a score of 34 to 21. Another great half of basketball coming up. We'll be back after these messages from your local station on the Raycom Sports Network. Thank you, Vidal. You've changed, Vidal. Thank you, Vidal. Because you're using more styling products, it's harder to get your hair really clean and sexy. But now you can with my new Vidal Sassoon Advanced Salon Formula. The shampoo cleanses away styling buildup. The conditioning finishing rinse leaves your hair radiant. New Advanced Salon Formula. Thank you, Vidal. Because if you don't look good, we don't look good. I volunteered. I dropped out of college and told them I wanted the infantry, combat, and Vietnam. Out of the hole! Ah! Take the pain! Take the pain! I got a bad feeling on this one, all right? Watch out! Rocket! Tom Berenger, Willem Dafoe, Charlie Sheen. No such thing as a coward out here. Don't mean nothing. The first real movie about the war in Vietnam is Platoon Rated R. The winning of the West Week is coming to Houston's Prime Choice. Starting Monday, Kirk Douglas is a gun unleashed in Man Without a Star. Tuesday, Sam Houston is the first Texan. Wednesday, Fort Osage is on the edge of Indian War. Thursday, feel the wrath of Hiawatha. And Friday, the Oregon Passage is held by Black Eagle. The winning of the West, all next week at 8 on 39 Gold. Now let's take a look at today's halftime statistics brought to you by Gold. Baylor University, 47% from the field and 9 out of 19, only 20% from the free throw line. That's unusual for Baylor. One out of five, 66% on three-point shots, two out of three. A&M, meanwhile, 44%, 11 out of 25, 70% from the line, 12 out of 17, and they do not have a three-point shot. Rebounds, 10 for Baylor, an impressive 20 for A&M. Quite a difference there. Turnovers, eight for the Bears, six for the Aggies, 13 team fouls against Baylor, eight against Texas A&M. And that's today's golf halftime statistics. Now, let's check some scores of other ball games, and there's going to be a shocker coming up here right now. Holy cow, North Carolina State has upset North Carolina 68-67. Here goes Valvano again. It's NCAA tournament time. That's a big win for North Carolina State. Memphis State 75, Louisville 52 in convincing fashion for Larry Finch and Memphis State. That's a great victory. We're at halftime, 34-21. Back after this message from Miller Lite Beer. My amigo Juan just came out from Mexico. So I'm introducing him to my American friend Larry and our favorite beer, Miller Lite. Now from Porfidor. Juan, me Miller Lite the gusto parque. It tastes muy bueno. Larry. Larry has mimosa calorios and no gusto filiopo. El comprende? No, not really. <laughs> For mucho great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Does your friend speak any English? <laughs> Right now, on new Toyota Corollas and Tercels, you can get a special luxury value package made up of options like AM, FM, stereo, cassette, aluminum wheels, cruise control, custom striping, and much, much more. All at a special package price that saves you up to $796. And that's a lot, particularly when you start with great Toyota value. So see your Toyota dealer in all the special value package Toyota models on sale now. Dear beloved Uncle Dwight, he certainly had a lot of friends. The Pruitts drove all the way from Alaska. What? Alaska. Oh, Alaska. I counted license plates from 18 different states. Hey, Earl, what kind of motor oil do you use? Motor oil is motor oil. What? Motor oil is motor oil. Oh, yes, he is. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. Four-cylinder cars work harder and need specially formulated Valvoline 4-Guard. Don't drive your car to an early grave. I drink still light full the second time. Oh, hi. Do you remember the first time you tried... Kiss, kiss, kissing? Ooh. But now... 
And when you first tried Coke, I bet you said, uh-uh, not for me. But hey, let's not let first impressions swim. And let's try Coke, Coke, Coke again, shall we? Because once you've acquired that new wave taste, you're going to want to try it again, again, and again. A Coke's delightful. The second. Catchy, isn't it? Catch the wave. Coke. Roger. Today's game is being brought to you by Miller Lite. By Golf. By GTE. By Jefferson Pilot. And by Toyota. By Hayes Micro Computer Products. By the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. By Diet Coke. By GMC Truck. By True Value Hardware. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Merle Harmon and Bob Ortigal with you at Reunion Arena in Dallas for the second half of today's championship game in the 12th annual Southwest Conference Tournament. The Baylor Bears with the ball against the Texas Aggies as we open the second half. Aggies lead 34 to 21. Baylor's going to have to turn this game around completely. And they'll have to start that at the defensive end of the floor. Right now, the defense of the Aggies takes the ball away from the Baylor Bears and a collision with... Buchanan fouling at the baseline. It's a good lead pass down to Tresvant. Todd Holloway with a basketball sees Tresvant number 44 down here, tries to get him the basketball. Buchanan number 43 in the green going after it, makes contact, draws the foul. The inbounded by Texas A&M. The winner of this one goes on to the NCAA tournament. TCU is the Southwest Conference regular season champion this year. Winner of 23 ball games. That is Todd Holloway opening it up for Texas A&M in the second half. Ten points for him. Not a good start for Baylor. The shot they had at the other end of the floor was not the one they wanted. You would think they would go with Williams or with Middleton. And then Texas A&M comes right back and gets a bucket. It's been a long time since Baylor has gone to the NCAA tournament. And they've got to come up with a big, big second half in order to go this year. That shot is not going to go down for McLemore. And the Aggies rebounded out of there. Texas A&M has led all the way. Baylor got off to a slow start. The Aggies have had control of this game, although Baylor outshot Texas A&M 47% to 44 in the first half. Baylor just hadn't had the shots. As we anticipated, Baylor playing the more familiar straight man-to-man -man defense that they like to play. They're capable of playing it well, and they've done that on many occasions this year. The record proves that. Clifford, ball taken away by McLemore. That's a good example of it right there. Here come the Bears. They need to score this time down the floor. Buchanan going for three. His second three-pointer of the afternoon. Well, we've talked about it enough. The, the problem is that that's only the second time he shot the ball. He shot it one time in the first half. It was a three-point attempt, and he made it. That's his second shot. It was a three-point attempt, and he made that, too. Friday night, he had five in a row. He was asking for the ball. You need to make sure that uh, the people that should be shooting the basketball are shooting it. Clifford tries to work inside to Kreit. Kreit is fouled by number 24, Michael Williams. That'll be his third and the second team foul of the half against the Baylor Bears. Kreit holding the right side of his face, his right eye. He appears to be all right, though, I guess. There's some contact made in there. James Francis, the Baylor linebacker, comes into the ball game for Darrell Middleton. Middleton has had only two points. Remember, he is the Southwest Conference leading scorer. Well, it's not been a good basketball game for him, at least to this point. But he's got a lot of time to turn it around when he's in there, and they're talking to him right now. Bright with nine in the first half, picks up number 10. That gives him 66 points for the tournament. He will be a first-team all-tournament selection. Buchanan gets the rebound, but goes over the line out of bounds. Buchanan thought he was forced out of bounds. We no longer have that call in, in basketball, that force out. It's either a foul or the man travels or steps on the line. Woody, Woody Mayfield, the official with that call. Oh. 
there's a defensive lapse again by Baylor that time. Holloway was left alone underneath. They got him the basketball, and he had the easy two-pointer. Again, the Aggies lead by 15. Buchanan wants the basketball. He wants the shot. Back to Moore off the left baseline. 39 to 26, Texas A&M. The Aggies stand 16 and 13 for the year as they play today. It's not a lot of strategy for Baylor at this point. I think they have to play the man-to-man -man D, play it well, get the ball back, and then be very conscious of shot selection. Fresh Van to Kreit, and it will go down. Baylor rebounds it as James Francis clears it out of there. Turns it over to Buchanan. Buchanan throws the ball away as Williams he just wasn't ready. He was already by the ball. Here's Darrell Middleton coming back in for Gene Ivers Baylor Bears. He's number 44, the junior from Bryant High School in Queens in New York. They've been talking to Middleton ever since he's been on that bench. It's been a long conversation. We'll see if that makes any difference in his performance. Three turnovers in the half for Baylor. One for the Aggies. Holloway going for his third field goal. It is good. Holloway with 11 now for the game. What you saw right there, they hit the post and split the post. Just the three-man game, hit the high post man and split. It's as old as the game is, that particular play. Buchanan for another three. Middleton on the rebound for Baylor. Michael Williams, also a good outside shooter. They go back inside, come right back to Michael Williams. It will not go, but Middleton comes up to the board. Baylor will get another crack at it. This time, Frank Williams short of the mark, and Tresvan clears it out for the Texas Aggies. Short because of good defensive pressure by Texas A&M. 15 minutes, 50 seconds left to go in the game. Kreitz turnaround misses. Baylor clears it out of there. Right now, Michael Williams takes over and connects. I mentioned that in the first half. I really think Baylor needs to get more involved in the transition game. Michael Williams has great quickness. We know that he can go to the basket well. He also is able to see the floor and pass to the open man. They need baskets like that when you're down this far. They start looking. This is Clifford. Clifford trying to go to McDonald. Throws the ball away. It'll be played in by Baylor. And we have a timeout call with 15 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the game. The Texas Aggies lead it by a score of 41 to 28. Take me back where I belong. Take me where it's safe and warm. The Goodyear Vector is the all-season radio that pumps water away to keep more tire tread on the road. And for some, that's a comforting thought. Take me home. Goodyear, take me home. Never matters how far I go. Goodyear, take me home. Can you believe this? Right now, you can drive away in this full-size pickup from GMC Truck with 3.9% GMAC financing or $500 cash back and get automatic transmission at no extra charge. Plus, on specially equipped full-size pickups, you get air conditioning at no extra charge, too. 3.9 or cash back plus automatic transmission and air. Save up to a total of over $2,000. GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. See your GMC Truck dealer today. The news is out on the street. Bow church is big chicken. And the news is out. Bow church is big chicken. Red Crest and Breezes is what they've got. With the best news of all, it don't cost a lot. Red church is chicken, you always get more of a good thing. Now at Church's, get a Hagler vs. Leonard Super Fight Cup and a big 32-ounce soft drink for just 59 cents with any $2 Church's fried chicken purchase. Baylor 12 out of 26, 46% from the field. Texas A&M 14 out of 30, 47% from the field. But Texas A&M really dominating the glass. 15-15 to go. The Aggies on top, 41-28. to 28. Baylor in possession. McLemore looks but doesn't go. 
Good move by Baylor. They went 1-4 with Michael Williams out front, put the other four people on the baseline, let him go one-on-one. -on -one. Good strategy by Coach Iba, and they end up getting a good shot. I think they need to do more of that. Now the Bears fans start to come to life here at Reunion Arena. They've had very little to yell about so far today. Back door, Holloway, no go. He was fouled by Buchanan on the way in. The old-fashioned back door. You flash a man to the high post, you give him the basketball from the opposite side of the floor, and then you break the man out front on the side of the floor where he came from. They've been successful with that all year long and have done it well here in this tournament. Buchanan picking up his fourth foul. He's the good outside shooter, remember, and they need him. Michael Hobbs, though, who did very well in the first half, will replace uh, Buchanan. Hobbs is number 23. He's a freshman from Clear Lake, Texas. Todd Holloway is on the line. Senior from Albany, New York. 11 points for the game for Holloway. Now 12. Well, his game is a lot more today than that 12 points that he has because he has done a great job against Mark Buchanan, who's now on the bench. Buchanan with three shots and only two field goals, both three pointers. Holloway is really hot on the free throw line. Shelby Metcalf. Not only is Shelby orchestrating the basketball game, he's trying to orchestrate all janitorial responsibilities for the <laughs> officials. <laughs> 43-30, three-point effort, misses everything, and Trez Van has the ball for the Aggies of Texas A&M and turns it over to McDonald. How about McDonald on the transition off the baseline? Up by Clifford and missing, and Clifford comes out with the rebound, and Holloway to McDonald and back to Clifford. Holloway had a pretty good shot, but he thought McDonald had a better one. Neither player forced it. Speaks well for their judgment. McDonald... Banks it in for the left side. The more I see that young man, the more I like him. McDonald is a junior from New York. They call him Mr. Excitement in high school when he was at Park East High. They stay with the 1-4. Michael Williams makes a good move, gets Frank Williams the basketball, but he loses it out of bounds. Baylor turns it over. The Aggies take the ball with a 15-point lead and 13.54 left to play in this championship game. Shelby Metcalf hoping that his Aggies, who did not finish well in the conference this year, but have been red hot of the tournament, can keep right on playing. And they will if they win this game today. Shelby, an interesting gentleman. <laughs> he really is, isn't he? He says, I don't know whether we belong here or not, but we're here and we're having fun. Middleton trying to take it away, but Karan Graves, who just came in for the Aggies, saves it. The ball is tipped away by Baylor and out of bounds. Dr. Metcalf didn't agree with the call. He is upset. Hafford, who was in uh, for a couple of plays, is out of the ball game. Hobbs is back now for the Baylor Bears. It comes into Winston Kreit. Trent Vant rolls it around and down through. Uh, he did it with good quickness. Got the basketball inside and he did it right now. And if you're going to move with it in there, you want to keep it off the floor and make your move immediately. Just moments ago, the Aggies had cut, or rather the Bears had cut the Aggie lead down to 11. Now it's 17. The longest lead of the day for Texas A&M. And they have led right from the beginning, all the way. <laughs> this one will go for Michael Williams. The Aggies rebounded. followers as they watch the clock and watch the lead. Now stand and applaud as Texas A&M brings the ball down the floor. McDonald looks that ball into Tresman. How about that pass, folks? That was a great pass. Look at that grin on McDonald's face. I'll tell you, McDonald and Holloway, the guards, are really outplaying the Baylor guards. Texas A&M guards definitely have the edge to this point in the basketball game. Now a 19-point lead for the Aggies. McDonald would rather take a ball off the boards and start a fast break than score. He's that kind of a player. He loves to make things happen. And the ball is taken away by McDonald. That leads Watch to this. One. Watch this. You can see it coming from the other end of the floor. On McDonald on the charge. No basket. Contact was made with a defensive player before the shot. Here he comes, Mr. Excitement. Watch him take it to the hole. Contact.
is made before the ball was released. It's a good call by the official. The basket should not count. McDonald gets the charge. And Shelby has to be content with just a 19-point lead. Well, he's enjoying every minute of this. <laughs> but he's not comfortable, I'll promise you, with 12 minutes and 9 seconds on the clock. McDonald has picked up his first foul and gets a little rest. Baylor's still in that 1-4 baseline offense, and that's why, right there. Michael Williams going against Karan Graves as he drives for the basket and is fouled. Would you believe that that is only the second team foul on A&M? That's another reason that they have that lead. They have not been committing fouls, and Baylor has not been able to get to the free throw line. We've got a timeout with 11.58 to go in the game, and the Aggies lead Baylor by 19. We've got what it takes. We've got what it takes. At True Value Hardware Stores, we have a lot of different customers, professionals and do-it-yourselfers of all different ages. But they all have one thing in common. They all know about the great service they get at True Value. We take the time to treat people right, and that's what keeps all those different customers coming back. Thanks, Don. Time and time again. We've got what it takes, True Value. If your car leans toward the high performance, we suggest that before the performance starts, you get Gulf Super Unleaded, the high-octane gasoline with high-tech Tecrolene. It cleans intake system and fuel injectors better than any other premium. High-octane and high-tech Tecrolene mean high performance. Gulf Super Unleaded. Unlock the power. The Great American Face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Actra Plus. Solid. With the Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra Plus. Only from Gillette. Remember to stay tuned to the end of today's game when we'll be selecting our Ford Player of the Game. That's coming up at the end of the game, the Ford Player of the Game. Last night, the Lady Longhorns of Texas beat Arkansas in a very close game here in Dallas, 72-70, to win the tournament championship of the Southwest Conference. The Lady Longhorns are also the number one rated team in the United States with a record of 29-1, coached by Jody Conrad. Our congratulations to the Lady Longhorns, the Southwest Conference champions and tournament champions. Mark Buchanan back in the basketball game, and you can bet Baylor would like to get him some outside shots. Also, uh, James Francis is back in. He's number 35. They've really done a number on Middleton today. And McLemore off the baseline, left side, goes after his own board. Clifford pulls it away for the Aggies. Tough day for Baylor. Yes, it really has been. But Credit Texas A&M with a good defensive job of pressuring the ball well and keeping the basketball away from Daryl Middleton. It's very difficult to beat a team three times in one year, isn't it, Coach? Yes, it is. And, you know, Baylor has beaten Texas A&M twice, and it's the first time they have swept that series since 1971, but A&M has the edge here today. They're getting even. Two games played earlier were rather close. Uh, Baylor won 71 to 70 and 51 to 48. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Underneath the Kreit. Kreit gets two. I think they'll score as a one-point win in the first game between these two teams and a three-point win in the second game, both of them by Baylor, tells you a little bit about parity in the Southwest Conference. And it's not a question of the fact that it's not a good basketball conference. It is. Michael Williams. And a foul against the Aggies. I think this offensive strategy for Baylor has been very effective. Michael Williams in the 1-4 again, outside. That may appear to many to not be a very high percentage shot, but in the case of Michael Williams, it's something that he does very well. He's pretty, pretty much under control right there, and we've seen him do that for three years. He's a junior at Baylor. He'll be back next year. Deron Graves is fouled out of the ball game. He was not a starter, but he has started several games this year for the Aggies. But he's also been a very good player coming off the bench. Right now, Michael Williams on the line. 
Averaging 17.6 points per game this year. You have to wonder when Baylor's going to go to full court pressure. They haven't done that yet. They continue to pull that defense back and play that normal half court man to man. We're almost halfway through the second half of this championship game. Clifford going to cry it underneath. Ball knocked out of bounds, and I believe Middleton was the last man to touch it. He of Baylor. <laughs> Dr. Metcalf. I have not seen him go so long into a basketball game without the removal of that jacket. Trez Mack sneaks in on the left baseline. Maybe the 20 point lead has something to do with that. Yeah, he's got to be thinking about next week. Michael Williams, number 24 for Baylor. He'll move him down on the baseline right now. There's the 1 4. Middleton, Clifford giving him a bad time right now. From the outside, McLemore. Robert McLemore, his third field goal for Baylor. 20-point lead now for the Aggies and 9.46 left. Merle, Michael Williams needs to work the side of the floor where Mark Buchanan is because they have to play Buchanan tighter. It will give him more room. If they do come to him when he penetrates, he can dump the ball to the good shooter. Take away and a take away again. Holloway, three on two. Will not go and is cleared off by James Francis. He forced that shot a little bit. That was not the best decision that he could have made. And Clifford took the ball away and was fouled then by Michael Williams and Gene Iba, the head coach of Baylor in his second year, uh, a little bit more than upset. He's been a very successful coach at Houston Baptist before coming to Baylor. He comes from good stock. His cousin Mo is the coach at Drake, used to be at Nebraska. His father Clarence coached at Tulsa. His uncle Henry coached at Oklahoma State. Mo Iba Murrow at Drake University is the assistant coach. Gary Garner is their, their head coach. Did he succeed you at Drake, Gary? Gary Garner did, yes. No. Tresvan to the outside. Aggies, eight minutes, 56 seconds away from advancing, and now they have a big 55 to 35 lead. A very impressive lead, and what a tournament they have had. They upset number one seed, TCU. Come back and beat last year's champion, Texas Tech. And here they are today with a 20-point lead over the second-ranked team in conference play this year. Michael Williams got his own rebound off the three-point attempt. McLemore looks, doesn't take it. Buchanan goes to the inside, and it is Francis. James Francis getting his first bucket of the day. It is 55-37, Texas A&M. No, no full-court pressure from Baylor yet. They'll have to go to that before too long. Texas A&M going for his 17th win of the year. If you joined us late, North Carolina State upset North Carolina. Jim Balvano and company go to the NCAA automatically with that tournament victory. And, of course, you know the Tar Heels will be there. 7.39 left in this one. Texas A&M now working the clock. They've got seven seconds on the shot clock. McDonald to Trezvan, who fires it with three seconds and connects. They took it right down to the bottom, didn't they? A&M, good offensive execution. They used the clock. They ran time off the clock, then went to a 1-4 set. McDonald went one-on-one, -on -one, dumped the ball to the open man, and Trezvan put it in the hole. Buchanan doesn't make it. Here come the Aggies. McDonald, Holloway, and Kreit. Now the ball is taken away by Michael Williams. Williams won against three. And Trezvan fouls him as he partially blocked the shot. Great quickness. Michael Williams went the length of the floor with a basketball. John Tresvant, you see him right there, committed the personal foul. Coming into the game is Michael Hobbs for the Bears, and going to the sideline is James Francis. 
Free throw shooting. Baylor's been to the line only six times. Texas A&M 21 times. Baylor's converted two. Texas A&M 15. And I think that's plain and simply because Texas A&M has done a good defensive job. They've been a very good position defensive team today. They haven't reached a lot. They haven't enabled Baylor to get to the free throw line. Michael Williams rings up number 14 for the afternoon. We have a timeout with seven minutes and two seconds left in this championship game. The Texas Aggies are leading the Baylor Bears by a score of 57 to 38. Did I say I'd come today? Does he know I'm on the way? Are you there? Goodyear Eagle GT Plus 4 is the performance tire with all season capabilities, and that can make all the difference in the world. Take me home, take me home. Goodyear, Goodyear, take me home. You know, I worked every day I can remember. Any day I didn't work, I don't remember it. And the way I see it, I'm going to be working for another 20, 25 years. You want to know what I'm going to do when I retire? Nothing. I mean it. Nothing. I might eat. Might go fishing. Maybe. But what I'm really planning on doing is absolutely nothing. Nothing. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Right now, you can get some of Toyota's best-selling cars and trucks loaded with a special sport group option package. Options like AM, FM, stereo cassette, aluminum wheels, a rear spoiler, special striping, body side molding. In fact, there are so many options, you'll have to see to believe. But the best part is, you can get them at a special package price that saves you up to $672, and that's a lot. So see your Toyota dealer and save big bucks on value package Toyotas. For the friends of this man all over the land, and I know he's got thousands of them, that's John David Crow, the Associate Athletic Director at Texas A&M University, 1957 Heisman Trophy winner under Bear Bryant at A&M and a great pro career, St. Louis Cardinals, and he has done an outstanding job as an athletic administrator at A&M. Well, Baylor needs to get it going, Merle. They need to get it going right now, defensively, full court pressure. They're going to have to start gambling just a little bit. You don't want to make stupid fouls at this point, but you can't just lay back. You're going to have to try and win the basketball game. That's what it's all about. Six minutes, 46 seconds left to play in the game. The Aggies lead at 57 to 38. Jackie Sherrill, who is athletic director and football coach, of course, at A&M, his Aggies won the Southwest Conference football championship, but now Shelby Metcalf's Aggies are trying to win the conference tournament. Foul call, trip to the free throw line for Holloway. Middleton getting number three. Once again, Holloway and McDonald, the guards for Texas A&M, have really played well here this championship game. Holloway, five points in the first half, six in this one. The original starting lineup for Texas A&M is still around. They've had some foul problems this year and certainly had them yesterday, but today they've done a very good job. I think by looking at that bench right there, the Baylor bench, it will tell you a little bit about the score. Holloway trying to make it eight out of 11 on the free throw line today and does. Again, a 20-point lead for the Aggies. Six minutes and 33 seconds left in the game. Merle Harmon and Bob Ortigal with you. Delighted to have you with us this afternoon from Reunion Arena in Dallas. Buchanan almost lost the ball, but retains control and spots a man in the corner, and Hobbs pumps it up there, but doesn't get it. And the Aggies do off the board. A&M would not normally do that right there with a defensive rebound. They would usually get into their transition game, but they're trying to use the clock right now and allow it to continue to run, and that's a wise decision on their part. Clifford brings it out to McDonald. In fact, Shelby Metcalf says McDonald's the best passer he's ever seen, and we've seen some of his work today. Right now he shoots and shows that he has other talents as well. 
He's also very effective, extremely effective at the defensive end of the floor. He creates a lot of problems. 12 points for McDonald, Michael Williams, and Middleton underneath is fouled by Tresvan. Tresvan gets his fourth foul. Daryl Middleton has not been able to get the basketball very often here today where he likes to get it. He loves to get the basketball down low with his back to the basket and turn over his left shoulder and shoot that little jump shot. And he has a great touch, does it extremely well. It's been a frustrating day for Middleton who has scored only two points and he led the conference in scoring this year with an average of 19 points a game. Well, I think the frustration was witnessed right there in that free throw attempt by Middleton. Middleton will be back, though. The only man that uh, Iva loses off the starting team as Kreit rebounds is Mark Buchanan. He's got a lot of young kids, underclassmen, coming along. Well, they'll be a good basketball team again next year, but they need to get after it here in the next five and a half minutes. See if they can't climb back into this thing. Tresvan. Air ball. Followed by Kreit. Travel, though. No basket. Frank Williams, the junior from Dallas, comes back into the Baylor starting lineup. And Darrell Middleton goes to the bench. Baylor needs to get shots quickly right now. You still need to be concerned about shot selection, but you just cannot allow yourself to take as much time in getting to those shots. There's a good one right there. You want to get it inside. That's a good play. Stop the clock, get to the free throw line. Winston. Kreid picks up his second foul. Notice how fast those hands go up when you have a, an 18-point lead and you foul. Uh, see, you, you've been doing this for so long. You've been announcing games for so long. You're one of those guys that's still in favor of that guy having to put up his hand when he commits a foul because that makes it easier for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Always thinking of the easy way out, Coach. Bob Ortegold, longtime collegiate coach, uh, we're delighted to have him as the analyst on our game today. The shot put up there and missed by Hobbs. And we've got a whistle and a foul. Now Baylor getting to the free throw line a little bit right now. Middleton was there just a little bit ago and missed two. Hobbs gets there and misses. Now that's, that's a place where you absolutely have to capitalize. Rank tough one. enough, tough enough to catch up uh, when you add to it the fact that you can't make free throws. It just makes it worse. Frank Williams picking up the foul for Baylor, and the Aggies take over. 22-point lead now. Holloway makes it 24. I'll tell you, Merle, for Baylor today, the porch light is on, but nobody's home. It's unfortunate because it's not indicative of the kind of team that they have been all year. Buchanan for three, and McLemore battles to get it back up there again, and he gets fouled by Winston Crite. Right, picking up his third. The hand doesn't go up quite so fast this time. <laughs> I think this is something that AM really wants to stay away from right now. It's, you don't want to commit a lot of fouls. You do not want to stop the clock, number one. You don't want your opponent at the free throw line. All you're really helping him to do is, is to get back in the game if there is enough time. And there's still four and a half minutes left. And let's not forget the three-point shot. I mean, you get enough of those, and, and you're able to convert them. You can get back into a lot of basketball games. We've seen that happen all year. McLemore's second shot to be in play. And he missed them both. So Baylor is frustrated on the free throw line as well as in other areas on the floor. The Aggies have the ball with a lead of 62 to 38 and 4.17 left to play. McDonald tries to drive the lane. He gets picked off in the lane. It's going to be a long four minutes right now because Baylor has no choice but to do that kind of thing. They're going to have to stop the clock. They certainly do not want to commit the intentional foul. Well, I, I'll go back about five or six years or so, and I'm looking at Bob Ortegel as a coach at Drake once in a while when you had a tough one like this. You just couldn't get up over the hill. Well, it seems like an eternity ago, and, and uh, certainly I can identify with, with the fact that in coaching you experience opposite ends of the spectrum, certainly. There is no greater high, nor is there any greater low than winning and losing at the collegiate level in basketball. And boy, for a trip to the NCAA tournament. 
McDonald misses the second one, and Baylor gets the rebound but loses the ball as McLemore hit the deck and travel. That's a pretty good explanation there. We don't know what it's all about, but it looked like it was a good one. I'm not sure why the travel. If you do not gain an advantage when you go down with a basketball, then it's not traveling. If you go to the floor with a ball and gain an advantage, either get back up, roll over, get away from contact, or something like that, that is gaining advantage and should be a travel. Holloway handles the ball, works the clock, 63-38. Texas A&M, 359 left to play now. This is going to get to be the Todd Holloway and Daryl McDonald show now. Oh, isn't that the truth? Now the uh, Baylor Bears are coming out, starting to press. They trap here and take the ball away, and but who takes it away? Holloway, or rather uh, McDonald. Quickness. Yep. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. The Aggies take a look. Six seconds left. McDonald starts to make his move and is fouled by McLemore. A Baylor, number 22. So he is fouled out of the game. It's been a long day for that young man, but it's been a good season for Robert McLemore and his Baylor teammates. Number 10, Darrell McDonald. Certainly, I think the Baylor Bears have a shot at postseason tournament play in the National Invitational Tournament. We're going to get some more switches for Baylor. For those who have watched the Bears all year, I, I think that they, they would uh, agree with you there, Bob, that they got uh, hit by a very hot Aggie team today, a very loose Aggie team and an experienced Aggie team. and. Baylor just couldn't get out of the shoot, but you got to give the Aggies credit for that. I think it goes back to the first 10 minutes of the basketball game when they did three things defensively that I think broke their rhythm. They tried to play a combination defense, two people playing man-to-man, -man, three playing a zone. They played a little bit of straight man-to-man -man defense, and they played some straight one-two-two zone, and I think that affected them tremendously. We've got a timeout with 3.29 left to play in this championship game. This is a Hayes modem. Plug it into ordinary phone lines, and you can send financial projections to the PC down the hall. Or locate a single part anywhere across the country. Make airline reservations. Send or receive electronic mail. Or access millions of pages of data, from company profiles to every fact in the encyclopedia. The Hayes modem. It's like sending your PC to college for under $600. Hey, could I tap some of your computer expertise, son? So you finally gave in. Yeah, for starters, how does the disk fit into the disk drive? Okay, the Army can train you to program, operate, or fix computers. What does the printer interface do? It lets the computer talk to the printer. They talk to each other. What do they say? Then there's a telephone modem hookup. And the computer training you get is yours forever. Be all that you can be. Like you're not going to be the only computer expert in the battle. <laughs> The Texas Aggies lead the Baylor Bears by a score of 65 to 38. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines. Whether you're traveling to Florida for spring training or spring vacation, chances are Eastern's going your way. Eastern, the one to the sun. Aggie fans are three minutes and 28 seconds away from the celebration. The Aggies are headed for the NCAA tournament. Baylor still battling back as Michael Williams now with 16 points. And that gives him 50 for the tournament. The Aggies will be pressed now by the Baylor Bears. It is 65 to 40. Dave Reichert, number 11, a senior. Brandon Taylor, 25, a senior now in for Baylor. And Frightened got an easy one as the Aggies just cranked up and went to the other end of the floor. That really beats a press any day, any day you go out there. Anytime you put five people in the backcourt and you leave the basket unattended, you need to be aware of that deep pass. And AM capitalized on that post pattern. James Francis gets fouled. Going for a layup. Tresvant picks up the foul. That'll be his fifth. 
That's Brandon Taylor, 25, Morrow, at the free throw line. Off the bench, a substitution was made. It's Brandon Taylor, number 25 for Baylor, who will shoot the free throw. So Tresvant, 10 points out of the game, 302 left. He really played well today. He did a lot of things inside to help out against Middleton. Fright took Middleton much of the time, but Tresvant was there to help out. Brandon Taylor, the senior from Leland, Mississippi, who is 6'7". Mark Buchanan. We look at the Baylor bench. It's obviously not a happy group of young men. Staying right with it is Michael Hobbs. A&M did not go after him that time, and that's probably wise at this point. You want to pressure as much as you can, but do not commit the foul. Do not stop the clock. Nuggies lead 67 to 42. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the championship game. Coconuts is now in. Number four, good ball handler for Texas A&M. Holloway spins to the lane, goes right back outside to Coconuts. They've got 24 seconds left on the shot clock, and Coconuts is fouled by Stephen Hafford, number 10, from Cleburne, Texas. Coconuts, a pretty good free throw player, really helped them in the quarterfinals of this tournament against TCU, came off the bench to play about eight minutes and played quite well. So Coconuts on the line for a one and one. Second shot will be in play. Well, you saw the Baylor bench a moment ago. Here's what the winners look like. I'll tell you what, the assistant coach looked pretty happy right there, but the rest of them not yet ready to celebrate. They want that clock to run out. Hanging in from the left side is Brandon Taylor. Just a senior, hasn't played a great deal of basketball for Baylor this year, but took out a little bit of frustration right there. 68-44, Texas A&M, we're near the two-minute mark in this championship game from Dallas. The 12th Southwest Conference postseason classic, played on a brand new floor, by the way. Built in Michigan by a company in Dollar Bay, Michigan. They imported it in here, and it's really nice. Nice driving layup by Dave Riker. A&M willing to give up that two-pointer, not willing to commit the foul and stop the clock. 68 to 46, Texas A&M, a minute 35 left to play. That's what you want to do. Move the basketball before the defensive man gets to you. Do not wait for him to get there and then try to throw it over the top. Foul is called on Stephen Hafford, number 10. That'll be his third. We'd like to take a moment here to say so long to a very important member of our Raycom sports team, Carol Van Norman, who has operated the electronics graphics machine on most of these games we've telecast in the Southwest Conference in the past three seasons, is leaving us following the end of the game today. So to Carol, we wish you the best of luck, and we thank you for all those long hours and hard work you've put in to help make our telecast something special. And we hope to see you again somewhere down the road. A fond farewell to our gal, Carol Van Norman. Quite a young lady, very talented, very much into her work, and we all wish her well. Lots of changes now, and the winners laugh and tell jokes, and the losers say deal. Yes, sir. And Shelby's over there talking to the officials, got that big grin on his face, and he likes to deal. There's a pretty good card player right there. 16 points, 17 points. On the other bench, though, it's a tough, tough afternoon for the Baylor Bears. They know they're a better team than this. It just didn't happen for them today. A&M gets the rebound with a minute 15 seconds left. The Aggies, a real Cinderella team, finished eight in the conference, but is winning the conference postseason tournament. They started it out by beating the regular season conference champion TCU, and the Horned Frogs were ranked 15th nationally. An excellent basketball team, but the Aggies have proven that they're the best tournament team, at least in this one. There's no question that for the last three days, they've been the best team on this reunion arena floor. They've done a great job, played very well. They've played physical, they've played intelligently, they've played with emotion, and they've played with enthusiasm, and that's what this game's all about. 
And they played with the admiration of the man you just saw, Shelby Metcalf, their coach. Coconuts is on the line again. I may have to take Shelby up on that fishing trip he promised me. He told me he was going to take me fishing. Oh, he's, he's got a ranch over here in East Texas. He'll take you over there. Look at him. <laughs> John David Crow, the associate athletic director, getting ready to celebrate with the Aggie basketball team. Second shot missed, 46 seconds remaining. Aggies lead 71-46. Take away by the Aggies. Clifford zips it down the floor to McDonald. And McDonald, oh, a oh, little bit too fancy there. Right back down the floor is Rackard, and his layup is missed, but a follow is missed by Reeves. And finally, another try by Taylor, and again by Rackard, and it still won't go. And Clifford clears it away for the Aggies with 20 seconds remaining. Indicative of the frustration that Baylor has experienced here today. Now the Aggies are just having fun. Ten seconds left to play. McDonald brings it back to the outside as the crowd starts to count it down. And McDonald leaves it for Tad Thomas for the last shot of the game, and it is over. And so the Texas Aggies win the Southwest Conference postseason classic number 12, going from rags to riches, winning all three games and knocking off Baylor today by a score of 71 to 46. So the Texas Aggies go to the NCAA postseason tournament. Time was you could put a truck on the market and get by with just an ordinary guarantee. With Ford and Chevy, it's still that way. At Dodge, we put a standard 550 protection plan on every truck we build. Every truck we build. Now ask yourself, where would you rather be, back there with them or out here with Dodge? America's best back trucks are ram tough, and that's guaranteed. What's the hottest team in the Southwest Conference? A set of four 12-ounce Ironstone mugs featuring your favorite school. Order your set today. Just $10.95, only at Gulf. Our forward player of the game is Winston Cride of Texas A&M, who had 16 points today and 72 for the tournament. Winston Cride, our forward player of the game. We'll return to Reunion Arena in just a moment. Right now, a new Toyota Corolla's and Tercel's. Bob, the Baylor Bears beat A&M twice but couldn't do it three times. And consequently, A&M gets to cut down the nets. Well, they shoot 53% from the field, 70% from the line A&M does, and they dominate the boards 35-27. to 27. A great performance. They were led by McDonald with 17 points. Important notice to all Americans born between 1912 and 1942. If you are currently between the ages of 45 and 75...